Hi there, and in this video, quite pra practically and straightforward, I want to teach you the at least the most important basics of Godot. Of course, they are, they, there are a lot of concepts that you have to know that include the fundamentals of the engine, but well, at least I wanted to give you like the most important things, and everything I'm going to explain it with an actual project that I have created. So this is the game. Uh, I will actually turn off all the sounds in the recording, but well, it does have some sound effects uh, implemented. So basically, here we have a player that can jump. It does have some kind of decorations implemented. It has a parallax background. Oh, well, not a parallax background, background but a, a background that is scrolling. Um, so basically, here the player dodges these kinds of vehicles. Okay, so quite, quite simple. And let's start with the pretty basics. What I know this because we have been using notes like for a super super long time but we may not really know what a node is if we ask ourselves and basically the node is the basic unit of creation of a godot and we can actually think of nodes as game objects okay because they this is what they actually are and they are actually nodes for different usages for example let's take a look at the player so the player has as a root node a character body in this case this is a node specifically designed uh, to create bodies, okay, or stuff that we want to move with the script. So in this case, well, the player ha does have like a lot of things, but for example, here we do have a code that is going to be able to handle how the body is going to be moving around. Not only that, but also if I go ahead and create um, a brand new scene with a character body, an advantage that they provide is that they have a template here with a basic movement already set up. Uh, so it's something that can actually save a lot of time So well there you see another example now also in this uh, player What we can see is that we have another node inside of it an animated sprite And this is the same thing as an sprite, but we can add multiple sprites to create animations N Then it also has a collision shape to actually be able to collide with objects at the same time It has an audio stream player for playing audio. So this is exactly what I know this they are basically game objects for different purposes Next, what is exactly a scene in game development and in Godot in general? So a scene is a small portion of your game. Usually in Godot, what you have is multiple scenes, okay? For example, this is a scene specifically, specifically for the background, this one specifically for the coin, for the decorations, uh, the main scene where we have everything, uh, I don't know, here we have the road, etc. So this basically allows for better organization, okay? Because I have like small copies of everything, but um, with, with this, okay, what we can think of scenes are not only like small portions of your game, but I like of thinking uh, of scenes as two different types of scene. The first one, which is the most usual, is basically sub um, container scenes. So they are basically these small portions, the background, the coin, uh, the player, the road. So these are the sub scenes, okay? Basically, yes, indeed, small portions of your game. And then we have container scenes, such as the main, because this one is a bigger scene with lots of scenes instantiated. So this is a container with sub-containers inside of it. This is the approach that I like to, to explain to my students when I am explaining scenes. And the same thing with, for example, a menu scene. This has some scenes inside of it. In this case, we have the menu, and we have, in this case, just the background itself. But well, in a menu scene, you may have even like more and more things. This is just a pretty simple example. So yes, scenes aren't only sm the small units of your games or small portions of your game, but also they can be either container scenes, such as the menu, the main scene, etc. But they can also be used as sub container for smaller portions of it. Now also coming back to notes, uh, sometimes or well, lots of times we may have to reference them in our code and, uh, and there are a lot of ways of doing this now the most recommended way of doing this is with an onready variable because if, for example here in the vehicles container or in some place over here for example over here with the uh, spawner timer okay whenever wherever i'm using this over here well actually i'm not using this uh, reference but for example, here the coins label I am. Um, oh, I'm sorry, but I am not looking for the reference correctly. Here, the coins label, I am using it over here. So instead of having uh, to, to, to use this line over here that is quite long and complicated to understand because UI coins, coins label, you really have to read a lot. 
by just using coins label it is much easier and straightforward. So that's why it is usually used a non-ready variable and also it has more advanced uh, advantages that I am not going to be mentioning right now because it doesn't come to the case. The thing is that whenever you want to reference a node, make sure that you are using this unready annotation, okay? This is called an annotation. And instead of having to code it here yourself, unready, uh, var, and whatever, actually a much easier way to do this is that, for example, if I wanted to reference this vehicle container or even something that is in, inside of any other, such as this menu button, what I can do is drag it, okay, with my left mouse click and um, before actually dropping it here in the code, I hold down the control key on my keyboard, I release the left click button of my mouse and I reference is automatically created. So that is something that you really have to know about. And for example, then if we, I don't know, take these three nodes, okay, and we do the same, those reference are created as well. Lastly, another thing that I would like to talk about nodes, they're basically the different uh, bodies that you can use and colliders, okay? So basically you have three physics bodies, okay? Or physics body 2D, which are static, character, and rigid. And these are bodies that all of them, um, they do have some kind of physics. So for example, with a rigid body, you would use it in order to create a wall, and then you would use a static body to create the wall in which it should bounce. And if you created that wall with an area 2D, it wouldn't actually, for example, bounce, it would just fall. That is why here these are divided into physics bodies, okay? Because these three do react to physics. And then we have already explained character body 2D. This is for characters move with a script. Ah, well, basically static bodies, they are exactly that. Bodies that you are not going to be moving, so you would use this for, for walls, for example. And areas 3D, they are basically exactly that, an area that can detect collisions. So, for example, let's take here a look at a practical example of some of them because I haven't used all of them in this simple project. So, for the player, I use a character body. I have already explained that. But also, for example, uh, for a, let me look for the vehicles. But for the vehicle, I basically, for example, used an area 2D. Why? Because this allows me to quickly detect uh, collisions uh, with, uh, with other nodes. I haven't done the collision here because of the system of the game but I actually am doing this body enter signal collision detection directly in my main scene. So this is why I exactly used an area 2D and not a character body or a physics body because the via the area 2D is the only one that actually has all these collision signals. If I go to the player here with signals, I would not be able to detect the collisions. So to make it simple, whenever you want an object to receive collisions, you must make it an area 2D now, if you want your object to be some kind of a player, okay, that you want to move with a script, you may use a character body 2D. If you want to create an object that is like pure physics or will have like a lot of physics, a rigid body would be the best thing to use. And a static body for something that doesn't move. And lastly, I want to discuss some pretty simple GD script concepts, or well, some of these can also be applied to other languages. The first one are variables. These are basically values that are stored in, in the game and can be modified. For example, the score will modify and the coins will be modified as the game goes by. And constants are also a value that are stored, but these values cannot be modified. If I actually wanted to change this constant value, I know here I did max level a plus equal one or whatever, I will receive a, here an error. Now, in terms of functions, we have two types of functions. Functions that are built in, for example, the ready function in Godot is called as soon as the game starts and we can't modify its default behavior, which is exactly that. So as soon as we start in this case, we am going to be spawning, okay, some stuff. And that is a set behavior. But on the other hand, I have custom functions such as the spawn function. This is one that I created myself. Or for example, spawn vehicle. This is a function that I created myself as well as spawn coins, as well as, uh, well, any other function that I may have over here. So indeed you have built-in functions and custom functions. Built-in functions, they are created by the engine and their behaviors cannot be modified, such as the ready function that is called at the beginning of the game. And custom functions are created by the developer. And of course their behaviors can be set. 
And last, the topic that name is not super beginner friendly, but it is quite easy to understand at least the most important stuff, and that is static typing. And this is a way of writing code in which you statically type or you are pretty um, conscious about the types of variables, function parameters, etc. So here you can see that everything is statically typed. Um, for example, the score will always be an integer, so if I do it like this, I cannot then later in the code modify its type. It also helps debug, it also helps clarity, but well, static typing is a much more complex topic. Uh, but well, I just want to mention that this is called static typing and it does have some advantages. But well, we already have already created a video in the channel specifically about static typing, so you can go and check it out if you want to know more about that topic. Or if you actually want to become an expert in Godot, so well, actually not an expert, but start creating your own things in Godot and learn a lot about all this code and all the things that you can do with it, as well as static typing, make sure that you buy the course that I will show you in a second. If you are serious about leveling up your Godot skills, check out my course. In less than 6 hours, you'll master Godot fundamentals while building this amazing project. Links in the description. See you there.